Hi there, it's Sarah of Get Weaving. I'm going to do a short video, the first of a few, um, for people who aren't confident sewers. I'm getting a lot of messages. Um, I can weave, but I'm not a very good sewer. Can you suggest anything? And also questions about what sewing machines to use, but I'll cover that probably at a later date. The first thing to say really is because I weave a lot of my fabric on a narrow rigid heddle loom. My favourite is my 20 inch Ashford Knitters loom. Um, the weaving essentially all comes off as a long scarf. So this is a piece I did. Um, it's 12 inches wide now after washing. It's um, <laughs> long. It's just a long scarf. And then um, Oh, what is it now 164 inches by 12 and a half after washing that's for a jacket so essentially all the weaving that my friend elizabeth and i have done for years is comes off as a long scarf the problem obviously that a lot of new sewers face is they're not terribly sure or confident how to cut it without it unraveling so i'm hoping to help a little bit with that So if you don't really want to cut your weaving up yet, but you do want to wear it, obviously the simplest thing to make after a scarf is a cowl. So all this is, is a piece of weaving and sewn together. Kept the fringe from both ends. Very simple. I've made loads of them. If you want it a bit more interesting, put a twist in it. So it makes, <laughs> I think it's called a Mobius. You can make them much wider, like this one, and then kind of roll it over. So that could be your first bit of wearing your weaving that isn't a scarf. <laughs> The first time you cut into your handwoven fabric can be a bit scary. <laughs> I produced a little booklet called Cutting Without Fear. There's all sorts of tips in there. But as a starting point, um, for example, I had a piece of fabric like this it's for a pair of trousers. It's quite a loose weave, um, hand spun weft. One of the first things that you can do, the easiest thing, is two rows of stitching cut in between them. That's a good starting point and then of course there are other things that you can do after that i do get asked um how i can help the people who don't have a sewing machine and i'm afraid I think you need one. I don't honestly think that hand stitching cut edges of a hand woven fabric, unless it's really quite well fold, will stop it from fraying. There are several things that you can do, but they still involve a sewing machine. So for example, this one here, I put a binding on the edge. Um, I put it often on the wrong side first and then turn it to the outside and then pin it. And then a zigzag stitch because that stitches holds both sides. So I did quite a few things in the past that had no lining. So I bound the seams on the inside, which looked really nice. Um, something else you can do is to cut your fabric, stitch it uh, wrong sides together and then a ribbon or something over the top of it but that obviously is a bit of a feature and you might not want to do that
So this one, this is the right side. That's the wrong side. So I bound both the edges there and then top stitched them so they're completely flat. So that's a really nice way of finishing something, especially an unlined jacket when you get that far. Um, something else I quite like doing is making an overskirt. So this one. So all this is is two pieces of fabric. I've stitched some ribbon on the top. I've left the fringing and I like wearing these over a pair of jeans. So again, you can start wearing your weaving without having to cut complicated shapes. I think straight lines, cutting straight lines are um, quite straightforward. Two rows of stitching cut in between. It's the curves that worry people because everything <laughs> starts to walk. So I'll go into that a little bit later. But first things first, make things that are square shapes. That's what we did when we started. There was very little cutting into the fabric to make complicated shapes. One of the very first garments I made, although this isn't me wearing it, this is my niece, Sara, was this one. That is um, chenille. It's rectangles. I've got it here. <laughs> I didn't, uh, I didn't really know much about cutting fabric up. So, oh, it was inside out. It's good, isn't it? I must have tried it on. <laughs> so the top section, the yoke, if you like, is, um, oh, I think it's polyester. And then I put strips of it down the edges and then overlapped them. Um, yeah, so that's the inside. It's quite neat. There's no raw edges. So all the edges were, had something over the top of them. So obviously, uh, straight sides, completely straight sides, no cutting complicated shapes. Uh, strip down the middle. As I said, looks much nicer on Zara. And I wore that quite a lot. And then the bottom has an inkle band, I think. Or it might be tablet weaving. I can't remember. <laughs> it's very old. <laughs> The first book that Elizabeth and I published was called Simply Woven. That's this one. <laughs> 1986. And the people in the class were accomplished stitchers, knitters, good with colour, but they hadn't done any weaving before now and they all wanted to make clothing because they'd done a dressmaking class. So this garment here is a lovely example of using your hand weaving to make a garment. Two squares. I've, I'll put photos on as well. And then they're surrounded by some knitting. So they are just two blocks, 18 inches square, uh, with a woven band at the bottom. No difficult shapes. So a piece of fabric, 36 inches by 18, cut in half, um, some knitting across the shoulders and all the way down the sides to join them. But it's the weaving that's so beautiful. It's like a spaced and crammed. And then we borrowed our neighbour's daughter to model it. It was actually made by a lady who was about 75, I think. But um, they all gave me permission to use their garments in our book. And putting them on models was, was nice. This is another one. All rectangles and squares. That's how we started. No scary cutting, and this is the garment. So again, this is Sarah modelling. And then in between, you've got strips of knitting to join it all together. So not too scary.
Then I made a, a top. I'll add a photograph to it. This was the diagram for it. So again, rectangles, squares. That's the layout. I'll put a photograph in. Um, no difficult cutting. There was a um, tablet weaving across the top, which was stitched and then an opening left for the neck. And that was all quite thick cotton. The trouble with cutting your fabric, if the yarn's quite thick, is that if it even frays one row, it could make quite a difference to your seam allowances. Um, so if you can find a way of avoiding cutting strange shapes, when you start, if you're not confident, then just stick with squares and rectangles. Uh, in the background here, I'm making a mock-up for a top, and it's a copy of this one. <laughs> it's this one here. Very comfortable. Very simple. The only bit of slightly um, awkward, if you like, cutting would be the neckline. Um, so I usually do a bound neckline. Uh, the other thing that I do these days is I often make a miniature version. <laughs> That was my dungarees before I made them, just so that I can check the sewing instructions. They're the ones that go with my patterns. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. Just say I always put about an extra 10 inches onto my warp so that I've got you know that bit left to play with so I can practice cutting it and stitching it. I measure everything before and after washing. I wash a lot of things on a cool wash in the washing machine, short spin dry on the washing line but the main thing is that you've got a spare bit to practice on um, sewing machines you don't need a complicated one I do recommend a ballpoint needle a new needle for every project it's worth it and maybe a slightly longer stitch but again I'm going to go into stitches and things a bit more at a later date so I'll put some photographs on today I am wearing um, T009 it's a great big hoodie um, I made it to fit somebody bigger <laughs> but I've kept it and I wear it it's um oh what is it commercial warp and a hand spun wool weft it's still quite cold here at the moment so start to think about how you might happily wear your weaving maybe a cowl maybe an overskirt maybe a simple top with knitted edges have fun <laughs> See you soon.